Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we'll be looking at the various trade cart related bonuses and unique tax, including the team bonus for the new Bohemian Civilization. It almost goes without saying that trade is critical in team games once gold mines start to run out, as it allows you to continue to create the most powerful units in the game. Because of that, trade units are a major target for raids, and you'll commonly see players invest heavily in walls or even castles to keep them safe. Clearly, trade units are important, and by my count, there are five civilizations with something notable for their trade units, either making them cheaper, faster to build, or generate more gold per trip. So let's see if we can estimate the value of each of those bonuses in text and get a sense of their usefulness. To test them out, here I have a completely clear trade route and three markets on each side. I'm using a normal map size, which is recommended for a 3 vs 3 game, and of course you get more gold for having a longer trade route. So I have a pretty long one set up, giving a little over 100 gold per trip. Now, depending on how gold intensive your army is, it may change the number of trade cards that you're aiming for, but I think 40 trade cards seems reasonable for a post-imperial game. Once everything's running for a generic civilization that ends up bringing in just under a thousand gold per minute, which is enough to sustain five stables constantly producing paladins or seven archery ranges making arbalesters. In the test, I started by queuing up 40 units in the markets and then let it run for a little over 30 minutes of game time, noting each minute how much gold was in the stockpile. Obviously, in reality, you wouldn't spend 2,000 gold to queue up 40 trade carts all at once, but this ended up being the easiest way to track how much gold was coming in. Thinking through a generic civilization starting up trade, on a map this size, it takes a little over 5 minutes before they return any gold. Not only do trade carts take 51 seconds to create, but they also need to make the trip back and forth across the map. Even once the gold starts trickling in though, it's not until around 11 minutes that you have the full 40 trade carts working, in this case bringing in about 1000 gold per minute. So now that we have the baseline for a generic civilization, let's get into the different bonuses in text and see what kind of value they can add. The first we'll consider is the Italians with their Imperial Unique Tech Silk Road, which cuts their trade unit cost in half. With 40 trade cards up front that saves 1000 gold minus the 250 cost of the tech, so in this case the tech is worth in the ballpark of 750 gold. Graphing it out, it doesn't look like that big of a difference in the long run, though this may also undersell the tech. Depending on how many trade cards you lose and have to replace, you could end up saving more than 750 gold as well as a couple thousand wood. I think giving a range is a more accurate way to summarize it depending on how the game plays out, maybe between 2000 wood and 750 gold in an ideal situation where you only make 40 trade carts, but possibly up to 4000 wood and 1750 gold in an extreme case where you end up needing to replace all of your trade carts once due to rating. Already you can probably tell we're going to see some big numbers in this video. The next civilization feels somewhat related and is the Portuguese with a bonus for 20% cheaper units. This does apply to trade cards, saving 10 gold each, and in this example would have a value of 400 gold. Though, like Italians, we could stretch that if you're replacing trade cards and say it's up to 800. At first glance, this is by far the weakest of the market bonuses we'll look at, but it's also a bit more complicated than that. Considering all of the Portuguese units cost 20% less gold, it's almost as if your trade cards are collecting 25% more, though that may sound counterintuitive. For example, a generic civilization making hand cannons from 8 archery ranges would need roughly 40 trade cards to keep that up. On the other hand, Portuguese with the same number of trade cards could sustain 10 ranges, or have the same 8 range production from just 32 trade cards. Getting the same production with fewer trade cards has a ripple effect through your entire economy, as now you have 7 or 8 more population freed up for either additional villagers or military units, depending on your need. All this to say, the gold saved directly on trade cards doesn't perfectly capture what's going on, and if we're thinking about the late game where gold is mainly being spent on units, I think we can throw a bit of potential population space as part of the value added by the bonus. The next civilization we'll look at has incredibly the same architecture set as the last two, as Mediterranean civilizations seem to attract a lot of trade bonuses. This time it's the Spanish, with their incredible team bonus increasing trade unit gold by 25%. To see it visually, we can just multiply the generic rate by 1.25, and it looks pretty impressive. That said, it does take a while to get going, and if we assume the Italian Silk Road is worth 400 to 800 gold, as Spanish, you're not reaching that point until around 10 or 12 minutes. 20 minutes after starting trade though, the bonus can be worth as much as an extra 3000 gold, which remember is for every player on your team that's trading. 
Interestingly, the same sort of logic as with the Portuguese applies here as well, where you could cut the number of trade carts down by 7 or 8, or keep your usual number of trade units and produce from more buildings. Once everyone has fully switched to trade, you're functionally giving your whole team the Portuguese unit discount, as remember they can also produce from 25% more buildings or cut their trade carts down by 20%, exactly the same as the Spanish. It's hard to put a single number on the value of this one as it takes a while to kick in, but with 40 trade carts, it's somewhere in the ballpark of 250 extra gold per minute for each player on your team. Remember, this is also down from the plus 33% that it was up until a few years ago. The next civilization feels pretty similar to me, and it's the Indians with their Sultan's unique tech, giving them plus 10% gold income from all sources. The fact this applies to trade cards means I wanted to include it here, even if it doesn't normally jump out as an obvious trade card bonus. Once your trade is up and running, you can expect it to be worth around an extra 100 gold every minute, which 14 or 15 minutes after starting trade should put it theoretically on par with Silk Road, while it just continues to add value from there. That brings up an interesting point though, which is that the game won't necessarily drag on long enough to feel the full effect that Sultan's or the Spanish team bonus are promising. If you're starting trade, the general assumption is that the game is going to go on for a while longer, otherwise you wouldn't waste gold and wood making trade units. But for the next civilization, the question of valuing resources now versus later really comes to the forefront. The civilization I'm talking about is of course the Bohemians, who have a bonus making their team's markets work 80% faster. I'm not sure why they keep picking 80% faster for bonuses like this, as we see the same thing for Bulgarians and Malians. Maybe they think people would be confused by 100%, but 100% faster just means double the speed. So working 80% faster is almost twice as fast when making units or researching techs. In this case, Bohemians and their allies don't make trade cards in the usual 51 seconds, but instead in just over 28 seconds. That means your earliest trade carts are completing their first trip sooner, and you're also hitting your maximum number of trade units in roughly half the time. You can see when testing it, the Bohemians jump ahead in gold collected simply because they get their trade units out faster. Once a generic civilization catches up in numbers though at around 11 minutes, you can see they settle at the same rate. Still, there's a permanent roughly 2500 gold advantage for Bohemians, and in a way that might even be better than the Spanish team bonus. You can see with both superimposed that it's not until 19 or 20 minutes after you start trading that a Spanish team is catching up. In a situation where you're desperate for gold in the short term, the more immediate return for Bohemians could mean the difference between holding a key area of the map versus losing momentum. Now, of course, the dream team would be with a Spanish and Bohemian player together, where everyone would be able to enjoy both the early boost in addition to the long-term payoff. It ends up working especially well because while each team bonus is strong on its own, they do most of their heavy lifting at different times. The combined effect is theoretically even better than the Spanish bonus back when it was plus 33% unless you're playing a truly marathon game. I should mention though in case you're unaware that you can't stack the same team bonus multiple times, so a team with 4 bohemian players isn't going to make trade cards in 5 seconds. Now, that was a lot of information, and a graph summarizing all of it at once is a bit confusing to say the least. So, to recap, here's roughly how much extra gold each civilization has saved or generated at 10, 20, and 30 minutes after starting trade. Early on, Bohemians jump out ahead, but as you can see, the Spanish and even Indians can eventually catch up. In contrast, Italian Silk Road is most beneficial if you're replacing a lot of trade cards or if you're having trouble affording them at the start. And Portuguese, I would say, benefit mostly by needing fewer trade cards, thanks to their discount. It's important to point out as well that while the graphs start at zero, this is already after paying for 40 trade cards. And in reality, the trade income for the first 8 to 10 minutes would be going into making those. It's a good argument for getting trade while you still have at least a bit of gold left on the map to mine. That'll do it for this one though, and hopefully it put all the different trade bonuses into a bit better perspective. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.